During the last decades, our environment has undergone a total change when it comes to the electromagnetic radiation. In the cities, we have a thick electromagnetic smog of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, cell phones, radio waves, and now 5G is joining them. Does it matter? How are we affected by it? What is electromagnetic radiation? Electromagnetic radiation appears when a charged particle is accelerated. It then creates waves of electric and magnetic field. These waves propagate through space and can be measured in hertz. One hertz is a wavelength per second. The frequency, the amount of hertz, varies greatly depending on the type of radiation. In the picture, you see different types of electromagnetic radiation, from extremely low to radio waves, microwaves, visible light, X-ray radiation, and gamma radiation. We are electromagnetic individuals who depend on our internal bioelectric systems working well. Electromagnetic radiation that comes from the outside affects our inner systems and thereby affects the biological processes in our bodies. We also send out electromagnetic radiation. The most powerful comes from our heart, then from the brain and the nervous system. To check if someone is alive, we check if there is any electromagnetic activity in the heart, if it beats, and in the brain, if it is still active. Electromagnetic radiation is close to what we today identify with life. Despite not being able to consciously read electromagnetic radiation, with some exceptions like visible light, we are affected by it. All charged particles, such as ions and electrons, are affected by electromagnetic fields. In our bodies, we find many charged particles. And, aside from those, it appears that every living being also has cryptochromes. These are electromagnetically sensitive proteins that are directed by genes and were discovered in the 1990s. The cryptochromes regulate the daytime rhythm and the melatonin production. Some absorb light so that based on this they can tell the body if it's day or night. The cryptochromes are also responsible for their navigation ability in some species of migrating birds. It lets the birds see the Earth's electromagnetic fields. It has been noted that some birds' navigation system is corrupted by man-made electromagnetic radiation, even at very low intensities. It should be noted that over the past decades, we have seen a great decline in birds and insects that depend on their electromagnetic sensitivity for navigation. The world bee population has seen a huge reduction since 2006. Also to be noted is that we depend on the bees for a large part of our food. Summarizing, so far we see that we are bioelectric beings and that electromagnetic radiation has the potential to affect us in a number of different ways. Species who are more dependent on their electromagnetic sensitivity have started to decline or disappear, while man-made electromagnetic radiation has increased. The Earth sends out a well-being frequency, the Schumann frequency. An electromagnetic pulse is created in the space between the Earth's surface and ionosphere. It is created by all the lightning that reaches the Earth. They all work as antennas. 
The pulse remains as the space between the Earth and the ionosphere can be seen as a resonance space. It is called the Schumann resonance after Winfred Otto Schumann, who described the phenomenon in 1952. The fundamental Schumann frequency is around 7.8 Hz. The Schumann resonance and the existence of life on Earth. The Nobel Prize winner, Luc Montagnier, fairly recently discovered that DNA communicates with DNA by sending out low-frequency electromagnetic radiation. By sending out the Schumann frequency, he was able to get the building blocks of DNA to organize themselves to that of new DNA that was built, without having added DNA to the solution. When the Schumann frequency was taken away, no new DNA was able to form just from the building blocks. It looks like the Schumann frequency may be related to the existence of life on Earth. The Schumann frequency, brain waves, and well-being. The Schumann frequency is something that all of us Earthlings have developed with over time. Maybe it is even because of it that we were able to come into existence. But there are more interesting connections. Our brain emits exactly the Schumann frequency when we are in a state of relaxed creativity. It is a state that is between theta and alpha waves. When we are no longer feeling the Schumann frequency, a series of problems start to arise. Some of the first experiments were done in the beginning of the 1960s by Rutger Weaver from the Max Planck Institute. Young, healthy persons got to live in a Schumann frequency-free environment underground for weeks. They primarily wanted to check what the length of the day would be for them. It was found that the persons got confused, were disoriented, had a hard time sleeping, and experienced headaches and stress. One would think that this could be due to the lack of sunlight. But, interestingly enough, the situation changed when the persons, without their knowing, were exposed to the Schumann frequency. When an artificially made 7.8 Hz frequency was sent out, their symptoms started to diminish and well-being returned. In cities, it is practically impossible to measure the Schumann frequency today. Out in the countryside, it is still possible. One of the reasons why being out in nature may feel so good might be that our bodies get the opportunity to experience the Schumann frequency. How the electromagnetic radiation affects the body. It is well known that ionizing radiation that is to say, radiation with a high frequency is dangerous to us. Ionizing radiation has so much energy that it can knock out electrons out of their orbits around the atoms. One well-known form of ionizing radiation is X-rays. Because it is well known that it is dangerous, we seldom experience it so we won't focus on it here. The type of radiation that we are almost exponentially increasing our exposure to is the electrosmog of microwaves from cell phones, radio waves from radio towers, low frequency radiation and extremely low frequency radiation from electronic equipment. Microwaves and cell phones as we know from our microwave ovens, microwaves have the ability to affect everything that contains water. But cell phones also use microwaves. The developers of the cell phones design them so that they will not cook our brains as we speak. Even though our brains are not cooked, 
they are still influenced by the radiation. In studies, we see that the radiation from cell phones affects the metabolic activity of the brain. Studies have been done using a number of different cell phones, looking at the metabolism of sugar when the cell phone was close to the ear. One clearly sees an increased metabolic activity around the ear with the cell phone present and active. But can microwaves that do not heat up our brains affect us in a negative way? Cell phone towers and cancer. Over the years, it has been difficult to get money to do epidemiological studies where one examines the health of persons living in the proximity of towers that radiate electromagnetic radiation. But people around the world who lived close to these towers started to notice that they seemed to have bad luck with their health, more so than their distant neighbors. Young persons were getting cancer and started meeting their neighbors in the oncology clinics. This led to the suspicion that the tower might have something to do with the bad health. Most of the studies done around the towers have been funded by private persons and only a few have been published. Often, when scientists are asked about studies showing an increased incidence of bad health around the cell phone towers, they tell us that there are no studies, or that the studies are of poor quality. But what are these studies saying? The trend that has been found indicates that during the first couple of years, living close to a cell phone tower, people tend to experience a host of vague symptoms, like difficulty sleeping, headaches, tendency to depression, anxiety, rashes, and so on. Only after a few years are the cancer clusters formed. There are hundreds of documented cancer clusters worldwide, but few seem to know about them. A cancer cluster is when an abnormally large number of persons happen to get cancer in a certain limited neighborhood. It is a number that you would not expect to see statistically. The perhaps most interesting part with these studies is when one overlays the map of the places where the radiation is the strongest and where the sick people are, one finds that they coincide. A cell phone tower sends microwaves that interact with each other and create an interference pattern. In some places, the intensity is higher than in others. Here is an example of an area with a tower. In the picture, the intensity of the radiation varies with the color. Yellow is the strongest, green is strong, while blue is weaker. The red dots are the houses where the sick people live. This picture is taken from Dr. John Walker's presentation. It has been seen that if a tower has existed for around five years, cancer starts to appear in people living nearby. After 10 years, one starts to see the formation of cancer clusters. But in some places, like in the case where a tower was set up just 50 meters from a school in Valladolid in Spain, it only took 18 months before three children, aged between 5 and 10 years old, got leukemia and Hodgkin's. During the previous 32 years, not a single case had been found in the society. Children have thinner skulls and are more affected by radiation. Whatever single study we examine, we can always find something that could have been executed better. And so, we may question the results. But when study after study, with clusters of ill people living close to the towers, appear 
it is hard to deny that there may be a connection. But what is the connection? Why would one feel worse? And how does cancer come into the picture? There is no clear explanation, but there is an interesting theory. We have already seen that persons who do not get to experience the Schumann frequency feel worse and start to show a range of symptoms such as fatigue, difficulty concentrating, headaches, sleeping difficulties, and so on. When the radiation from electromagnetic towers is dominating, the body can no longer feel the Schumann frequency. But what can the underlying mechanisms be? When the body does not experience the Schumann frequency, it affects how the pineal gland works. The pineal gland produces serotonin and melatonin. These guide our day and night rhythms. When the melatonin production is no longer optimal, one often has difficulty sleeping and the other symptoms such as fatigue, headaches, stress are not far behind. Melatonin is also a potent antioxidant. It helps to get rid of free radicals and has a rejuvenating action on the body, stimulating new cells. Free radicals can lead to cancer formation. It has also been observed that melatonin can jumpstart the immune system at night. The amount of white blood cells in the blood increases as melatonin increases, but is slightly delayed. Here you can see a diagram from the book Melatonin by Russell J. Ryder and Joe Robinson, where you see how the melatonin levels rise at night and how lymphocytes rise right after. The melatonin has a protective effect against cancer. The researcher, Russell J. Ryder, has identified 14 different mechanisms for this. If this production of melatonin is diminished by the electrosmog, then this may thereby reduce the cancer protection. In clinical trials in vitro, it has been seen that melatonin counteracts breast cancer cells. But if the solution is exposed to electromagnetic radiation, the melatonin no longer affects the cancer. Thus it appears that radiation reduces melatonin's protective ability against cancer. Volunteers in Germany have done experiments on people and looked if microwave radiation affects the production of melatonin at night. It was found that melatonin level decrease over time. After three months, a family had only 70% of their original melatonin. After six months, they had only 52 of the 70 they had before. When the family went on vacation and was no longer exposed to the microwave radiation, it took two days to get the melatonin back up to original levels. But as they returned from the vacation, it also took two days to get down to 23 of the melatonin they had on vacation. The levels were measured in urine. Similar volunteer studies were done where blood levels of melatonin were measured and it was found that it had dropped to 13% of the original level already after four months of exposure. What is interesting is not one particular study or the exact percentage, but the general trend. We see that melatonin production is impaired when humans are exposed to microwave radiation. What can we do to reduce the risk? Here is a checklist that may help you minimize your risk. 
if you have the possibility to choose where you live, then make sure you do not settle within a few hundred meters from a tower. How far the tower radiates will depend on the type of tower, how high it is, and how it is directed. With cell phone towers, there will often be areas of very high intensity and areas of almost no signal, like you see in the pictures above. Don't put your cell phone to your head when you talk with someone. Use the speaker or headphones. Have you checked what they say in the instructions to your phone? Usually, they will tell you to keep the phone at a distance from your ear. Don't carry electromagnetic equipment on your body, like cell phones, iPods, whatever. Don't use cordless phones in the house. These send microwaves to the base station, like cell phones. Sometimes the effect is even more damaging than living next to a cell phone tower. Don't hang around kitchen equipment that is on, especially microwave ovens. Most microwave ovens leak microwaves. Make sure you don't have a bunch of electromagnetic gadgets next to your bed in your bedroom. You don't want to be disturbing your pineal gland at night when it should be producing melatonin. If you often use your laptop computer, invest in an external keyboard with cable and a mouse with cable. The electromagnetic radiation is much higher right next to the computer. Never keep your laptop directly on your legs. Put it on another surface that is not in contact with your body. Choose to connect via cable instead of Wi-Fi when you can. If you put on Wi-Fi, always disconnect it during the night. Another tip is to have low and yellow lights at night so that you may improve your melatonin production. Read my article about melatonin and the effects of light on our health. There are more ways of protecting oneself from electromagnetic radiation. There are, for instance, paints that do not let radiation through, or windows that keep certain types of radiation out. It is possible to create Faraday cages, but this is probably more relevant for persons with great electromagnetic sensitivity. Though, now that 5G is coming, it might be of interest to at least paint one's bedroom. It is also possible to buy equipment that sends out the Schumann frequency, or listen to recordings with stereo headphones that generate the Schumann frequency in the brain. Check the video description for references to the studied mentioned here, as well as a written version of this video. Thanks for watching.